Hello and welcome to the next in our series of Photoshop tutorials. We're continuing with our photo touch-up video series. In the last two sessions we looked at curves and levels and now we're just going to be ha having a quick look at how to apply them uh, especially together and we're going to be looking at using masks to split the image into two so we can apply levels and curves to the different parts of the image separately. We'll be working with two images here and uh, we'll split the tutorial up into two videos because it will get rather long. So this is the first part of the two-part video. So here's the first image. And uh, the first thing I'll do is to um, add a levels adjustment layer to it. Like so. I'm just closing the end here to give it its full tonal range. And I'll move the midtones across. And as I try and get the right color for the midtones, you'll notice that I can either get um, I can either get the rocks down here looking very uh, clear, in which case the sky is all washed out, or I can get a nice uh, deep sky and a nice blue sea, in which case the rocks are all dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel that and uh, I'm actually going to create a mask uh, so that we can apply the levels twice, once to the rocks and again a separate one to the sky. So the way to do this is to uh, first of all make a mask of the part of the image that we're going to use. In this case it's the rocks. So I'll just select a lasso tool. And I'll just draw very basically around the line of the rocks. It doesn't have to be exact at all because uh, this will be feathered as you'll see later. Very basic line around the rocks. Just include this little one here. Like I say, don't worry if you go over the lines because it's uh, not important. It is important though that we do go all the way around the bottom here. There we go, up to there. And now the trick to this is to use uh, the feathering. If we feather this, we blur the edges and that way the uh, effect will be less noticeable at the joins. So I'll go into Select, Feather, and uh, this, um, like I say, it was taken with a, a 2 megapixel camera, so I'm only going to feather it, uh, let's say, 80, 85, uh, 85 pixels. There we go. And now, with that selection already made, I'll come into my Layers palette. I'll select Adjustment Layer Levels. There we go. And here's the Levels dialog. And as you can see, the Levels layer here um, has actually included a mask. So the white area is the area that we're going to be working on, and the black area will be masked out won't have any effect at all. So the effect here, the levels, uh, is only being applied to this white area along here, which is our selected rocks. So I'll move the uh, end point in so that we get the full tonal range. And I'll move the midpoint slider until we get the uh, contrast that we need. And as you can see, this is affecting the rocks and not the sky. And if you look at the edge of the rocks, you'll just see it slightly fading there into the sea, which is the feathering effect. That's the trick to uh, splitting these images up and processing them in two parts. So that's uh, that's nice definition, but just to bring in, just so it doesn't look too out of place when we uh, touch up the sky, I'll bring it across a little bit. Now, once again, as I keep repeating, this is on an adjustment layer, so if we do 
do it wrong, we can always go back and change it. I'll say OK to that. Now it seems we've lost the selection, so uh, I'll click on this mask here, control and click. That way it selects uh, the mask, the selection is remade. And I'll select the background layer again. Now we want to uh, do exactly the same but on the sky. So if I press uh, control and shift or command and shift on the Macintosh and I for invert, it inverts my mask. Okay, now I have the sky part and the sea masked, which should also still be feathered. Now I'll create another adjustment layer, which will be another levels layer again. And with a bit of luck, that will have its mask as well. There you go. You can see that the new layer that we're working on here has the white mask at the top part, which is the sky. So as I change the levels here, I'll make the white end right up here. And the black end, the very black, well, in, in, the, in the area that we've selected, there is actually no or little uh, absolute black. So if I move this right over, that would be a, a false idea. I'll just move it a little bit over there. And I'll adjust this mid-tones, the sky mid-tones. You can see that's giving me quite a nice rich blue sea there. Oh, I think that will do nicely. And I press OK. And there you have it. Two different uh, levels settings on two different layers. That's the rocks and the sky. So that's the original image. That's the sky processed and only the sky. And that's the rocks and only the rocks. And if you combine them two, they look like that. Um, I might just try and add a, a curves to the whole thing here just to uh, see if I can blend them in that little bit better. Another adjustment layer here. Whoops. I'll, uh, Select the background, so I'll put the curves underneath those two. Um, there we go, curves. And I'll just do the standard S to give it a little bit more contrast. I'll uh, take down the brightness of the rocks there and move up the brightness of the sky a little bit. It's, uh, See if that's helped at all. Okay, maybe that's helped a little bit. Let's uh, take it out. Yes, that seems to have enriched it a little bit as well. So this brings us to the end of the first part of the tutorial. The second part, we'll be taking a look at another image and we'll be doing some more uh, splitting of the image into two to apply different effects to the different parts. Don't forget that there is a complete list of tutorials at our website, photographybook.net. And uh, there's also loads of useful information on Photoshop and photography in general. So I hope you get to see the second part of this video. Thanks for watching and until next time.